<laughs> My name is Lynn Parrish, and I am here with Joe Arnett. Arnett. Yes. Arnett, sorry. Oh, Joe sorry. Arnett and Harold Lambert Sr. Yes. And we are at HPN today. Uh, it's the 15th of April. And if you could introduce yourself. Harold Lambert Sr. Okay. And how long did you work here? I've uh, been uh, well, in both plants. Uh, 51 years and seven months. I'm proud to say it. I love my job. And I'm excited to hear some stories today. Yeah, I, I'll tell you. And this was put in in 57. The coal shit, that's the, the that's that's coal, it's right? Uh, coal uh, conveyor, yeah. Uh, and uh, we used to call that the surge tank. Yeah, yeah. Uh, return uh, Condensate. Mm -hmm. And the big one upstairs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And will you introduce yourself? Yes, I'm Joe Arnett. Uh, I worked in this plant from 1973 to 78. So. Uh, so if you want to lead us into questions or we can take you no, on a tour. Just and, uh, you can take me on a tour and tell me. All right. What? Go this way. return tank when the steam condenses turns back in the water we return it to the plant so it can be reheated in the boilers and sent back out you know saving the chemical cost everything you're looking on this floor is steam driven fans or pumps to pump the water to the boilers or to the preheaters upstairs to be heated so you're actually looking at the bottom of the boilers here at this level and this railroad track over here used to be what we'd push the ash cart up and down to get the cinders out the door on the south end here and then Harold would come along with his crane the big crane you know, yeah, I love it. on on rails on train rails and uh, mm -hmm. would dip the cinders out and take them down mm -hmm. south and of course a couple of coal yards used to run a couple of coal cars up, back and forth on campus so are, we, are we on the uh, voice yes mm -hmm. Well, anyway, from the coal hopper there mm -hmm. to the cinder pit there, I had to roll back a few feet from the coal hopper to the cinder pit. Well, when I climbed up in the crane, there was nothing behind me at all. But anyhow, by the time I got the engine started, which is about that quick, and I sat down to operate it, Anyhow, there was a pickup truck stopped crosswise the rails, and uh, I didn't know I was pushing it. <laughs> he told my boss I was coming back like a bat out of hell. <laughs> he said, what do you mean, sir? The office is right there. He said, it only travels walking speed. <laughs> but I could push or pull six loaded cars with it. No kidding. Oh, yes. So it, did the crane stay here, or did it? Uh, and uh, in, the, in the fall of uh, 13th day of uh, September, 92, I was in a convoy going to North Judson, Indiana, to a museum, and I've operated it up there. Huh. And uh, <clears throat> So that's where it is now? Yes. And it's still operable. There's a, a couple of traction engines over here, too. Where there's, there's what? A couple of engines that used to park out here. Yeah, right here. There used to be a building right there with some old steam locomotives. They're like uh, 100 years old. Right. Uh -huh. Baldwin uh, built a Baldwin locomotive works in Philadelphia. Hmm. And, uh, oh, yeah, I mean, uh, just... But you used to go down south and pick up the coal from the coal yard and bring it back up here in a couple of coal cars before they start trucking it in? Oh, uh, there used to be right out here. I've got to get the door down here. Right out here, a pit that held 300 tons of coal 
and there was a, a bridge, a railroad bridge, across it. So you could, uh, this way, or this, on both sides of the rail. And uh, anyway, uh, the nickel plate railroad pushed our coal in here with steam. In other words, back before they, well, they dieselized in 55, the uh, nickel plate railroad. Man, I'm yeah. sorry, I've got to do a tour here, a quick tour That's of the old right. plant, and then I'll, be, I'll catch right back up with the gym. That's okay. With you. Thank you very uh -huh. much. And uh, anyway, uh, uh, there, sure. there's things, uh, uh, oh, I could go on and on. I want you to go on and on. Uh, I, I mean, <laughs> uh, it, uh, uh, How did the coal get from the south to here? Did someone take a train, like an engine <coughs> to get it? There was a track uh, from the airport out here, come clear down here and past the plant to, uh, well, there used to be one to go across the pit, but they filled it up, and then there was three tracks east of here. And uh, we could pull about six loaded cars with our diesel locomotive and uh, we called it the hill out there. About, uh, well, it's tore down now where the uh, Purdue uh, Transportation Building used to be. And uh, anyway, when we'd, uh, when we would uh, get to running our coal, uh, sometimes it was seven days a week. Uh, uh, in uh, cold weather, and uh, we'd run all of them, and then switch around, and, and with the crane and with the locomotive too. And uh, anyhow, we after uh, on a Sunday morning, uh, well, we had uh, six empty cars. The coal bunker up there held. 300 ton. In other words, we go up on the other level. Mm -hmm. And anyhow, uh, <laughs> see, there's never been any injuries or anything like that. But there's some things that uh, happened during my lifetime. And anyhow, on a Sunday morning, and the rails was a little bit frosty, and, and again we was traveling a little past walking speed. <laughs> and got to State Street, and I had the flag, in other words, and this driver ignored it, and the coupling made contact in the driver's door, and we pushed him down 55 feet, we made it through the creamy fence, and uh, he had uh, an old 35 Dodge, and he had masking tape on his uh, windows, and he climbed out over his wife and infant, and blood, well, flying from, well, the broken glass. I mean, uh, you know, he's already taped up. And he threw his coat down on the ground and said, I want somebody to say there wasn't no flagman out there. And there's some just bystander says, my God, man, if you couldn't see that engine, how the hell could you see it? <laughs> and that's some of the things. See, nobody got hurt Right. in my lifetime. There's never been... And the train tracks went all through campus, right? Uh, With no mm -hmm. crossings. Yeah, and they used to end around here. Well, there's a building there now, but anyway. And then later they filled the pit up, and then they built us uh, for the center. We called it the main, and then one on each side of it mm -hmm. for our engine uh, locomotive. And, uh, uh, and oh, I mean. And there was three of us uh, on the coal crew, and uh, starting here in uh, October uh, the third, forty-six, uh, like maintenance and various things, and uh, in July of forty-seven, then there was uh, uh, one of the coal crew was 70 years old. He had to 
retire. Mm -hmm. And that's when I was on the coal crew, continuous, clear on to the end. Mm -hmm. Nobody bothered me. I knew my job. And the only time I like to see the boss, you know, be yeah. the time of day. And if they, if they wanted me, well, they let me know. But I'll always say I love my job. Good. And I miss it yet. <laughs> and I always will. And that was the break room where you, mm -hmm, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah, that's where we ate lunch. And uh, we used to work from uh, uh, 7 to 5 with an hour off for lunch. And, of course, we'd eat pretty quick and then get in the Uber game. <laughs> and, and everybody, in other words, in low temperature, no one left until all engines were running. Meaning, if one, in other words, wouldn't start or right. something. Like, but it ain't that away now. It's not that away. Uh, uh, Kenny Burns was uh, one of the executives before Sinus, I believe it was. And I think they got two since him, since uh, Sinus left. And uh, he knew me and even speak. I mean, over in Freehaver. Mm -hmm. And, uh, hi, yeah. I didn't even realize he knew me, but but they, it's different now. It's different. Yeah, but it's gotten very big. And, uh, Lots of new buildings. Uh, President Hubby took office in '45. That was a year before I come here for fifty thousand a year. Do you think this one's worth ten times as much as he did? I know, for a shorter period of time. You can't say it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if there's any questions, I mean... Uh, you know what? We are trying to document the building as much as possible. I've actually spent quite a bit of time here lately, and I love it. Mm -hmm. So if you can just... Oh, I've got plenty of time. Yeah? Tell me yeah, and, how things, and, and like... Another thing I want to... Anything that has this red on it, uh, we're saving to incorporate in the new building. Oh. So this uh -huh. will be saved. So can you uh -huh. tell me what this does? Uh, anyway, yeah. Oh, yeah. I have seen these apart, like the maintenance. In yeah. other words, uh, take them apart, service them. And one thing or another. And the right here, there was a duplex pump. In other words, it was a little bigger. A duplex pump, like, uh, in other words, uh, you could see it move. Huh. And these here was adjusted to where that this would just take up the slack, like it, uh, it could speed up just a little bit or slow down just a little bit, where this was electric, I mean, and right here, and a little bit further. I'm proud to say it. A little bit further. Right here. This very spot where I was hired. Really? Oh, I'm proud to say it. Earl Stone. In other words, there was a, uh, a retired uh, Army sergeant who lived at uh, Dayton. Mm -hmm. uh, I had been laid off in Lebanon where we built school bus bodies and Sarge Lynch that's what we called him he said he heard that they need a couple of good men at the Purdue power plant and I thought well I never was in a power plant but I'm just sure gonna ask and anyway it's a, a few things he told me of it and like that and uh, I said I'd sure like to give it a try and he said when would you want to go to work I said well as soon as I could 
He said, be here at 7 o'clock in the morning. That was the second day. In other words, talking to him. Mm -hmm. And I went to work since the third day of October, 46. At 84 cents an hour. Really? At that time, you could buy a, like a Chevrolet a Ford Plymouth for about $1,200. Right. Like that. Oh, I'm telling you, I love my job. And you, I think you can tell that. Yes. And now, uh, these here is uh, boiler feed pumps. Okay. In other words, uh, we operated on 210 pounds of steam. And uh, anyway, uh, I've seen, uh, well, it, at times, I mean, uh, different ones running. And, oh, I'll tell you. Was it loud? No. No? Uh -uh. But was uh, it warm? The, they, uh, uh, when you come in the plant, it was kind of a roar, like the fans, mm -hmm. the draft fans. But other than that, I mean, uh, hmm. it says, uh, in here it was similar to the co control room down there. Minimum, I mean, as far as the noise. But when the boilers would pop, and you need <laughs> both fingers. And, but oh, uh, oh yeah. But I didn't resent it. And the most time I've ever spent while I was there, we had a coal fire in our bunker. Thirty-two hours. Really. Couldn't take it you know, without it. I don't mind it. I didn't mind it. <laughs> Took me a couple of days to recuperate. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it's a pleasure, and this is a pleasure. This is a pleasure. Well, I'm mm. glad you could be here with us today. Mm -hmm. Would you like to go upstairs? Oh, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Whoops. Whoops. I wobble. I wobble. Uh, it's all right. Yeah. I'll help you. No, no, no. <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, well. When you get to about 90, How old are you? 89, and I've been, my birthday is July 22nd. Happy birthday, that's coming Thank up. Thank you. Are you gonna do something special? Uh, well, uh, through uh, somebody mentioning it, I'm ready. <laughs> I tell them I'm on six months vacation twice a year. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. No, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I do that. I mean, uh, I mean, no problem. No, no, you would never guess you were eighty-nine. I didn't used to need handrail to climb these steps. I don't know these. But they're it's steep. Yeah. Oh, now. Yeah. So how long has it been since you've been here? In this building? Yes. Oh, it's been, gee, we're a big part of 10 years. Huh. And they, I've been hearing about grapevine is going to tear it down. And uh, it's awful. And I know, we're trying. Are we still on life? We are. Okay. We okay, are. Yeah, okay. Now That's this why is, we're trying to document it as this, much as this, possible. Well, some of it uh, maybe uh, uh, might not be interesting, but anyway. Everything. They put the coal in the boiler. They, this is called a waylayer. Okay. And there's the coal bunker. They run this under there and hit whole hell for about a ton. And then they come back here, whichever boiler they needed, like that. Uh, well, three and four, they walled that up since I've been in here. Five, six, seven, and eight. And like uh, one time, this uh, Oscar Young was, uh, he, he was born in 1900, <laughs> but he was running away, Larry, and uh, Bill Taylor, the maintenance was over in there. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, he, he didn't notice, and that spout there, 
In other words, hit him in the back. Oh my goodness. Oh, I'm telling you. Boy, uh, well, he didn't do it intentional, but. Right. Uh, anyway, uh, I got to tell him to watch what he's doing. And two, I want to show you right here. Now, now when I say anything, it's the truth because I don't wouldn't have to remember what I've said. <laughs> right here, the switches mm -hmm. for the cold system. Uh, there, <coughs> excuse me. There used to be an elevator outside they built for an emergency. Mm -hmm. Besides this one, this one here is put in in 57. So how did, there were containers, right? That the coal would go in and then they would go uh -huh. all the way and, up? And uh, there was a rubber belt with uh, aluminum buckets on it. Okay. How did the buckets get filled? Uh, the, with the flat head, uh, real thin head bolts. Uh, I think there was... Uh, four of them each in each bucket and from below ground right to the bunker so did somebody <coughs> put the coal in the buckets or uh, did it just from, scoop no, them up? from the uh, hopper the feeders under uh -huh. that uh, okay. uh, uh, that four by eight sheets of the steel covering the hopper now mm -hmm. but anyhow here's what uh, <clears throat> One day, all of a sudden, the lights went out up there, and the machinery stopped at the same time. My boss, Earl Stone, that hired me, was along. Well, Oops, I'm sorry. That's all right. Along here, and he st stepped up on the. Uh, there used to be a little platform there, mm -hmm. so you could look out the window. And he says, what's the matter up there? I said, the power's off. And gee whiz, he made a beeline to the generators. But anyway, I used to remember, there used to be one of these for the outside, and then they had four for the, so see, that's a hopper. Yeah, here it is, belt. Anyway, the power was off. So uh, I opened this. I don't know whether I can now or not, but this, it's, it's three phase, 440. And I went like this. <laughs> and one really? of them went dead. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Well, if I'd had had been barefooted, I wouldn't have been here. Right. <laughs> but My oh, goodness. that 440 is hot. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and right here, I've climbed them steps a bit of times. You want to go up there? I've been up there. Do you oh, want to go oh, up? Not really. I mean, uh, I've no. been all the way above the coal hopper up there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I I wish I could do it again. Oh, yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. This, uh, like I say, this was first fired in January 57. And, uh, they took out one and two boiler that was near the, well, 1924, the year I was born, and replaced them with this. And uh, the one and two boiler was a saturate boiler. Saturate meaning uh, it wasn't dry steam. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. <laughs> and uh, anyway, uh -huh. when did they take the hoppers off of three and four? Do you remember? Yeah, that's been quite some time. Quite some time. Yeah, 80s. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think, uh, mm -hmm. what, 86 was the last summer of steam production out of this plant? No, but uh, this boiler was last fired. Fire went out the last time in March 1992.
92. Okay. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and uh, when you came up while ago, I was telling <coughs> Max, it, uh, September the 13th, 1992, Kenny Burns, uh, he was before Chenis, uh -huh. donated the crane to the museum there in North Judson. And I put the, made it a point to be in the convoy. And uh, they pulled the, the crane up on the four, the trailer had four axles on it. Pulled the thing up on the trailer. And uh, so it's, that was on a Sunday. And we stayed over here, you know, where that new Faith headquarters is over here on Northwestern yeah. now? Mm -hmm. That used to be a motel. Mm -hmm. And Monday morning, everything was legal. Eight o'clock, we headed to the North Judson. Without incident. Uh, I mean, uh, like that. Well, this used to be a swinging place back when we worked here, you didn't have to have these heaters because the heat off the boilers and everything was... Mm -hmm. and, uh, was it hot year-round? Oh, yeah. Yeah. How many people, on average, worked the shift? Here? Yeah. About 50. 50 people? Mm -hmm. Maintenance, yeah. operators, everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Of course, it, it dwindled down towards the end when the south plant was up and going, but... Uh, mm -hmm. Plenty of activity, like Harold said, uh, maintenance crew, his crew, and then the operators. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the coal was delivered here by rail for three dollars and fifty cents a ton. Is that right? Really? And they say now it's fifty or sixty, ain't it? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. How many railroad cars would fill that? Uh, well, six them fifty is. Uh, 50-ton uh, cars, I mean, uh, oh. uh, about 300 tons or six cars. And some of them, in later times, they got to be them longer ones, 100-ton cars. It used to take, what, until noon to fill it? You'd have to stay up there and drop different plows and, uh -huh. and, and fill it And, uh, and way back, uh, the crane operator didn't climb in one end of the cars. Mike Loudon in the basement uh, under the feeders and I in the bunker would come down I'd on one end and Mike the other scrape it out what the big bucket couldn't get. Right. Shut the doors in other words and push it down there and go back Throw the switch, hook onto a load, open the doors. I'd come up here. And, well, I didn't shut them off. I mean, uh, like uh, during running, but right there's a switch, uh, huh. buttons, and, uh, and go where, in. where was the bunker? This is a cold bunker. Yeah, but that, that whole thing. thing. Okay. The whole yard was out here. Was mm -hmm. Right out here. Yeah, okay. the cars mm -hmm. would come along. You'd open the door and it'd drop <coughs> down into this. Bell. Mm -hmm. um, I don't remember. You stopped running that outside belt. You did exclusively inside here for quite a while. Oh. There used to be another one of these outside here. That was for right. backup. Right. Yeah. And uh, they took it out. I guess they didn't like the looks of it. No. no. So how did the coal get to the conveyor to go up? Well, it was an open grate, and the cars would run over it, and you'd break the doors open to go down into a conveyor belt that would bring it to this vertical belt. Okay, and, and it so would, it would slot automatic? Right, and then there's another horizontal belt. Well, you'd have to start electrical motors. Right. Horizontal belt running the length of this bunker, and you would just drop different plows for whatever section of the bunker you wanted to fill up. Okay. And then this thing, you'd go through and pull the lever, and it would come down, yeah. and that's what how you would feed it into Correct. the... Yep. Okay. Yep. 
you turn that wheel, it'd open those doors, fill that hopper up, and then you could run the length of the building delivering the coal to each boiler. And that was the uh, boiler operator would just go up and down the length of the floor when they were low, just refill. With the mirrors? Yeah. Is that how they tell? And if you worked the night shift and you fell asleep and the fire went out, <laughs> then you happened. got to call your boss. <laughs> yep, that happened. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. And of course, he would he would be very happy to come in at two o'clock in the morning to help you get oh, the fire going yeah. again. And, right. Yeah. And half the maintenance crew would come. Well, Louis used to have a uh, situation on the number seven boiler the, around the shaft the big shaft in other words a, like a rope mm -hmm. and uh, he uh, gauged it uh, pretty good and he put a weight over here that when that shaft would turn enough times it would drag that heavy weight off of the chair kaboom <laughs> uh, it's time for more coal yeah <laughs> <laughs> and one time he didn't hear it and he, when he woke up, it was just fire right on the back end of it. Gone. Yep, yep. <laughs> he told that himself. Well, I remember Bob Gooden used to bring a wind-up alarm clock in here, mm -hmm. and he would set it. He would time it to where he'd set it and he could sleep, and then the alarm would go off. Well, one night he called Barney. He said, Barney, the fire's out. you got to come in and help me, and mm -hmm. half the maintenance crew would come in. Mm -hmm. Well, they were working away, shooting kerosene in the boiler, trying to get the coal ignited, and the alarm clock was sitting on the table under a bunch of rags went off. So our boss went over and picked the rags up, said, hey, Bob, you might want to set that up a half an hour next time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So these things were moving all the time, right? Yeah, right. That's what made the coal go through right, the fire? Right, the, the front of the fire was in the front of the firebox. And then, of course, it would cool into cinders by the time it got to the back. And then you'd have water running on the cinders. Sometimes you'd get a lot of live ambers coming out at you when you were hauling ashes. Down, yeah, yeah. yeah, no kidding. And uh, yeah, coal in the front and cinders out the back. And, of course, that this would be the, the mouth of the boiler, and we won't tell you what the other end was. <laughs> so. And... For the most part, how many of the boilers were going at once? Generally three. For me, I I started working here in 73, so they already had the south plant on operation. So it was just this one on this end, the far two north boilers were going in wintertime. And in the summertime, they would just probably run seven or eight and just keep it online, keep the plant up and going. And Things like that, but I imagine you saw where this whole floor was in operation. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, three and four, right there, mm -hmm. was the first boilers here in 24. 24. And these two was in 26, and five and six was in 35 and 36, and number seven and 39, and number eight and 41, and this one. In 57. And of course, you know the story about Purdue being called the Boilermakers. You should tell us. Okay. This is the story. Um, Purdue football team, much as it is right now, was pretty in sorry state. Not very good at all. And uh, one year, they came out, they, they just beat everybody. They had a phenomenal record. And some of the opposing teams... At that time, the plant was going on, boilers were being built, uh, accused us of dressing some of these boilermakers up and putting them out on the field, and the name kind of stuck, Purdue Boilermakers. So mm -hmm. that's how we got changed from the pumpkin seeds to the boilermakers. <laughs> <laughs> I think that worked out best I, in the long yeah, run. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> Can you tell me, if we walk down here a little sure. bit, um, sure. we have flagged some things that we want to keep and integrate into the new building, and the long uh, 
some rusty colored thing now with the bolt coming out the front. Oh yeah. What is that? That looks like a manifold for the water tubes for the firebox and the boiler there. Okay. Uh, now, I'm not as familiar with these because they were in operation when I was here, but uh, Harold can probably tell you what's all going on there. Do you remember Larry O'Connor? I don't, no. Well, he, he, he wasn't around here very long, but I was just telling you about the power went off in, a, mm -hmm. in one thing or another, and everybody, in other words, is going. And Larry come down that water column. He said he seen everybody going and said, wasn't no place for him. <laughs> <laughs> That's the true story. And he slid it down like a fire He pole. come right down there. <laughs> well, it had insulation on it then. Uh, but, uh, sure. <laughs> and it wasn't no place for me. <laughs> And I'll go ahead. Yeah, it's part of the water distribution for the boilers. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My goodness. Any idea what that is? It's like a key for something, isn't it? This? Yeah. Well, you got me stumped there. It almost looks like some kind of relief thing with a weight on it so that if you want this thing to relieve at 10 pounds, you put a 10 pound weight on it or something. But mm -hmm. I, without the rest of it, it's a nice decorative piece. That's, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it looks cool. Yeah, Almost looks like an interior to some sort of valve, as far as the plunger for a valve, but I couldn't tell you. And what were these used for? The gears? Uh, that was uh, the meters to see the steam flow. There's the pressure, but I, I'm not familiar with uh, some of that other stuff. But it is the boiler controls. Mm -hmm. Boiler controls, yeah. Mm -hmm. This yeah. is uh, the hydraulic pumps for the old grinders, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, these are different style boilers where instead of having a grate system mm -hmm. like the boiler up there, the pistons used to push the coal in okay. mm -hmm. and the ashes would come out as all one great big molten cinder and then it would have to go through some grinders to grind up to where we could haul it out and these hydraulic motors here and pump would operate the grinders to grind it into a finer cinder to take it out and dump it. And, so. and the grinders were in the back? Downstairs. Okay. Yeah. And it would just fall through in a big piece? It would fall through in a big piece and then get ground up okay. and then we would have to empty the hopper downstairs and then cart it out so Harold could dip it out with his crane. So. And the people from uh, the EPA has already been here. That's better. Yeah, I think there's some still one some time. Yeah, it's one of the higher ups. Uh, I don't know if Democrat or Republican says, well, uh, really, that asbestos thing is better than what it was. Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, we have a photographer coming. Huh? Is there any way that you could? Sure. I'm he, sorry. He's, he's no, no, headed no. from Stewart Center. Okay. So I'll I'm sorry. Thank butt. you. So you could see these would come out, right? The pistons back and forth. Mm-hmm. This uh, here was uh, see the, the pistons. Mm -hmm. In other words, push the coal into the fire and come out of this hopper. Right down there, and when it's back here, a coal would fall in, and then when it goes that way, it would uh, push it into the fire. So was it fast moving, or? Uh, just very slow. Okay. Very slow. And it's controlled from right there. Okay. Uh, part of the controls. Hmm. And, uh, I hate to see it go. The big water tanks up there, in other words, soft water. I see they started up there somewhere with 
to make it soft, but I, I'm not. I'm not sure that you now that we, this like here has been stripped of the insulation. Uh, like over there, it ain't been yet. Right. Yeah, this is uh, in the mid 30s. And that was in 39, and that was in 41. Mm -hmm. Well, look at that. And they even got to, so you can see in there. Asbestos. Contains asbestos. Avoid creating. You know, a long ways, I used to do a lot of maintenance, cars, mm -hmm. pickups at home. The brakes, the brake shoes, the brake landings were made of asbestos. Really? How do you think I cleaned the area? With an air hose. Right. And I didn't have no mask on it. And I'm paying you 90 years old. They ain't a word of truth in them liars. Mm, I don't know what in the world we're going to come to. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You bet. They got the cover on it, but like uh, number eight, I mean, it's off. In the some way that uh, Louis found that he could wrap this rope around there and drag his weight off of the chair <laughs> to make it wake him up. So these things would have moved really slowly too? Real slowly, uh-huh. But that, that turns uh, continuous. Only real slow, or they can speed it up. But the number one boiler down there, that re reciprocates. It'll push, and then it'll back up, and this thing will drop in the next notch. And, uh, in other words, push it again. Right. Huh. Mm -hmm. And right across here was the superintendent's office. Right in these windows? Right, right. You go through that. If it's oh. still there, I don't know. They must be bricked up. <gasps> well, it's been bricked up. Hmm. But anyhow, uh, uh, Bill Miller, N.D. Miller, uh, from uh, when uh, Purdue went out looking for a superintendent, they had a search committee like uh, hunting for presidents, you know. <laughs> and uh, they finally found one in Minnesota. Bill was from Minnesota. He was a good egg. Uh, he was real short and little. I suppose he'd weigh 100 pounds if he's wet. But, <laughs> <laughs> but anyhow, at one time, we was taking up a track over there. Mm -hmm. As I said a while ago, it used to go across the coal pit. And the superintendent, Bill Miller, in other words, was telling me to pick it up. One of the beams, the rail. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. I was following his orders, and the chain broke and went flying across there. And this wonder had somebody had been in the way, but the fireman here, Rufus Mallory, he was on 311. That chain went across there and put a great big dent in the trunk of his car. And I'm telling you, he come out there. He already got ignition because somebody told him I uh, tore hit his car. He said, the very idea of you tearing my car up and not even come and tell me? I know it went this way, but I don't know. I didn't know where it hit. So I went across there and I talked to Bill. I said, Rufus is really disturbed. His trunk is bent. He said, I'll take care of that right now. So he comes through here. 
he said he won't say any more to you. So I imagine he used some words that he got through to him. Very idea. I was just going to lift it. With the crane. Uh, mm -hmm. right, yeah. With and the then, big crane. Huh. Uh, they said its capacity was 20 tons at a 12 foot radius. In other words, almost straight up. I never have lifted that much. But, hmm. Oh, I love that thing. So you primarily operated the crane? Uh, in 1960, Kenneth Powell taught me to operate it. And uh, when he got promoted to plant manager, they called it uh, chief engineer at the time, but still boss. Uh, and then, in other words, I got down there under there with him, with the grease gun. He's, in other words, uh, the coal being black, and some of them, if you didn't know where the fittings were, well, it was too bad, but he really taught me how to take care of it. And when he left it then, I was sure glad I did because I just fit right in. And, uh, Oh, I'm telling you, I just keep saying the same thing. <laughs> it can never be repeated, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, any other questions? I'm enthused to be here. Well, I'm so glad that you could tell us today, mm -hmm. fill us in with information. Uh -huh. Them the draft fans up there, over far air, and them fans down in the bottom, it was, uh, you know, that it pushes that it, the, right. the air in the fire. They mm -hmm. call them over, over far air. Did you have special dress codes, or could you just wear whatever? No. Did you have a special dress code to work here, or could you just no. wear whatever? No. Uh, yeah, just, and, uh. A lot of times when the coal was dusty, we'd come in as white folks. <laughs> and especially when the wind was bad. And I know one time down to South Plant, a uh, tremendous amount of coal that was stored there uh, would uh, spontaneous combustion. In other words, the fire would start. And I had to load that stuff in the car and then take a, a four inch water hose and tie it to the bucket and fill the car full of water and then to put the fire out and then when it drained and then to run it over the coal hopper and uh, uh, proceed to put it upstairs. And uh, I know uh, when the wind was from the west one time in other words, uh, when I'd open the bucket like that, you know, tremendous dust, soot, smoke, and I had to kind of uh, hesitate. I mean, I couldn't see. So after, <laughs> after a while, I had to go to the bathroom, and as I was going through the plant, I said, Harold, your face is dirty. I said, your face is dirty. And when I looked, and the only white was my teeth and eyeballs. <laughs> Black! I didn't resent a bit of it. Uh-uh, not me. Uh -huh. We're going to have more company? We actually have a photographer who would love to take your picture here, oh. if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. I don't mind. I might break the camera. I don't. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> My spirits okay. is pretty high most of the time. Good. I don't have the thought of uh, meeting my friends over at the restaurant or anything of complaining. Uh, nobody likes to listen to that. Do you go and meet friends every morning? That's what? Do you go and meet your friends every morning? Uh, uh, every, about every morning. Where yeah. do you go? Uh, Greenbush. Uh, uh, out there for, across uh, Greenbush Street from. Payless, uh, Burger King. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah, there's about a half a dozen of us. I, 
just sit around and tell stories, you know. That's nice. That's good. Mm -hmm. Keeps you out of trouble. Uh, or maybe it gets uh, you right. into trouble. <laughs> and uh, anyhow, there is a black person there. Mm -hmm. His name is Wilson. He, he told me that he was born in uh, Forest City, Arkansas. And uh, of course, so I further got acquainted with him. Uh, in, a, in other words, uh, just a friend. He's black and I'm white. But, oh, I'm terrible. I wish the world was full of them. But anyhow, he can see some of them. Well, I know about all the employees, you know, behind the counter mm -hmm. going every day. And uh, I forgot to take my morning pills uh, before I left home. And so at the coffee pot, I just, you know, got some water and pills. And he says, what's them pills for? I said, uh, birth control. <laughs> <laughs> we was close enough to one, one of the waitresses, you know, the workers. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, and sometimes, I mean, I go in there, and, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Strictly friends, telling stories, cutting up one time or another, you know. That's <laughs> Not a word nice. of sincerity or nothing. I mean, <laughs> just, you know. And that's a, that's the way I've raised. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they're going to take our picture? Well, I think he's just going to take your picture. Oh. I hope I may uh -huh. break his camera. So uh -huh. we'll just have you. In the picture. <laughs> <laughs> Are you from this area? Do you know I grew up outside of Monticello? Oh well, that's yeah, good. So neighbors. Yes. Yeah. Neighbors. Uh -huh. Yes. Where are you from? Oh. Uh, Here. I came from Boone County <laughs> in 1945, and I worked for. Uh, we built school bus bodies. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was laid off, and that's when I come to work here in 46. And so you moved up here? Uh, uh -huh. Yeah. I live at 1715 North 13th Street, <laughs> Lafayette. I lost my wife four years ago by Sorry. diabetes. She got her. And anyhow, yeah, we've been there. Well, she was with me more than 50 years. And uh, I was thinking the other day, uh, in uh, Memorial Day, 1963, we moved from south part of Lafayette to my present address. Mm -hmm. That's 50 years ago. Yes. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I've had a pretty good life. Proud to say it. And uh, my son lives across the alley from me on 15th Street. My daughter lives on 15th Street side by side him. That's, That's very mm -hmm. nice. Uh -huh. And uh, they uh, keep an eye on kinda, you. Kind yeah. <laughs> mm hmm. And uh, yeah, I see them most every day for maybe, you know, a few minutes. Mm -hmm. Just to say, well, everything's about you, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, my grandparents live in Idaville. Have you ever heard of Idaville? I've been there. Really? Mm hmm. Well, uh, uh, I have. Did you ever know a uh, Dilling? Yeah, which one? Uh, well, Clarence uh, was the father. Dick. And uh, it was Gene, their boy, and I think he had uh, three or four girls, and June, uh, Haskin, and uh, they had a, a younger boy. Uh, I can't think of his name right now, but uh, one time uh, we decided to go to Toto. Indiana. Yeah, Richard. Okay, <laughs> and kind of, in, in other words, and we mm -hmm. stopped there a few minutes before we went. And before we got there, I had a flat tire. So, 
That happens. Would you believe we're going to stop there again? Are you coming back? Second flat tire. My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Second. <laughs> and any more, uh, when I have a fl flat tire, I'm going to go to the tire shop as soon as I right. get there because I don't want to do that again. <laughs> so anyhow, June got her brother's car, went to Idaville, mm -hmm. and got a new tire put on. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Clarence and uh, uh, Dailing, he was, uh, I worked on construction. I think maybe, uh, I'm not sure, rebuilding houses or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm sure my grandparents would know him because it's oh, yeah. a very small mm -hmm. community. Gene's about my age. Oh, uh, he's not with us either, but, and uh, I suppose uh, Clarence is, uh, Past a hundred, if he was living, I mean. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, I enjoyed this. Whoops. Whoop. I didn't know for that. Well, I have enjoyed You know, that's to about you. the handiest thing you can get. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Especially if it has with the trunk that goes up, because when you're at the grocery store or have your hands full. Mm -hmm. Well, it's nice your children live nearby. Is he uh, an employee of Purdue? Um, kind of, and I think he works on his own as well. Mm -hmm. So both. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you? I am actually a graduate student. I'm finishing oh. up my PhD in mm -hmm. philosophy and literature, but I work with architecture, so I work at the archives, too, oh. to help mm -hmm. pay for school. Mm -hmm. And I teach in classics, so I'm busy. Boy, that tragedy that happened over here in I the mechanical know. building. I I, I've been in the building, but I, uh, I mean, decades ago, but I can't remember why. Mm -hmm. But anyhow, that was strictly They're sick. I know. They're sick. You I, know, I was bullied in school. And one time, I told my dad, I said, I'm going to get a pistol. Oh, the lecture he gave me. Never, don't ever do that. He said, they get you into more trouble than they get you out of. And, oh, well, it soaked in. I mean, I was just, oh, no, no. Right. What? Uh, but anyhow, you know what? What's that? I think we should establish residence in here. Uh, well, <laughs> it might be short-lived. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, where are we with this? Huh? You Let's need to go anywhere else, or are you wrapping it up? Whatever you would like to do. There ain't no generators over there anymore. No mm. uh -uh. Just the diesel over there. For yeah. The yeah. Mm. Uh -huh. What is that for? Well, that used to be emergency power when the phone uh, office was over okay. here in Enad. They, that diesel came in here just at the time that, uh, about the time the South Power Plant uh, was come on. Mm -hmm. But anyway, we generated our power here, and public service was our backup. Mm -hmm. And you remember that? Oh, yeah. Well, when we didn't have no backup, in other words, and public service went off one night, and everything went dead. And that's the next day that was put there <laughs> mm -hmm, and connected up. Yeah, everything went naturally. Mm-hmm. You bet. Yeah, this is a co-gen place. Not only was it steam for the campus heating, but they also turned electrical generators over there, steam turbine generators for the 
electricity. For th all the electricity? Yeah, at one time. And they still do that at, at Wade. Mm -hmm. uh, but I believe uh, Duke has made it where... Uh, you you uh, believe in the backup, don't you? Oh, yeah. Would you believe back in the 60s that we lost power in January? The temperature is about in the 20s, but the ice storm shorted out our transformer. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you, we can't live without heat. <laughs> uh, I mean, we had to go someplace else. So I bought me a generator. And, you know, I tried it. In other words, tripped the main breaker with the generator running. That furnace runs just like it. Oh, excuse me. Well, I'll, I'll know where to come if mine goes out because I don't have a generator. And uh, Richard Lehman, you know, he oh, yeah. was fired here. I pulled ashes for him. Uh, Way back there, I don't remember what year it was, but Publix, uh, REMC went off mm -hmm. for a long time, and he had a pretty good-sized freezer full of food. And, you know, it just he was itching for it to come back on, and he just waited as long as he could, and he went to Audubon and rented a freezer to put his food in, and you know what? It's sour as it could be. When he got back home, the power was on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you the timing. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But if he, if I would have had a generator at the time, he would have used it yeah, yeah. gladly. And two, his wife introduced me to my wife. Really? Uh huh. <laughs> That was back in the 50s. <laughs> oh, I could go on and on and on. <laughs> uh, that was just a couple of days ago, wasn't it? Uh, well, we married in 1954. 54? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Helen and Richard had eight children, I believe. Did they really? Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. And he said that he was... Uh, whatever it was, hadn't been feeling good for a long time. <coughs> and uh, he uh, told an employee to call his wife, said, bring a daughter with you. Mm -hmm. In other words, be taken to the hospital. Mm -hmm. And he misunderstood and said, bring a daughter. He said, daughter, well, I guess his speech is mm -hmm. Right. And when I went up there to see him, he said, the doctor said my blood was so thick that the heart couldn't hardly pump it. And I had pleaded with him to go to get checked out. But he got over that, but it didn't, after a while, I mean, yeah. he's gone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of pleasant moments. And I'm enjoying this, too. I hope so. You bet. <laughs> right now, I'm in favor of putting the railroad track back there. I am too. I was starting to see the place go down. We, the campus hasn't been right since. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot imagine seeing a train going through campus, yeah. especially like a working train I mean, across State Street and everything. Yeah. Coal and. All right. Go down and meet our photographer. Sure. This is John Underwood. But he don't live on Underwood. This is pretty cool. This is the first time you've been cool. in here, John? Just bring back a few memories. Oh, yeah. This yeah. is Harold Lambert. Nice to meet you, Harold. Pleased to meet yeah. you. This is Joe Arnett. Joe. Nice. I saw Joe at the door there. Yeah, I, I'm looking and I'm thinking my favorite spots to shoot is this right in through here. Seems pretty cool to me. Uh, and, uh, so how long ago was it when you when you worked in here? What year did what was, what was your last year to work in this plant? Do you remember? Oh six. Oh six. Okay. Because I was trying to because I got here in in seventy eight, and and I was trying to, I didn't I didn't remember these working at that time. But somebody oh, was yeah. saying they were still working up to seventy eight. Seventy eight was uh, blizzard of the century. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I came Until back from we got San this. Diego. And uh, I, I was back a year before that in Bloomington, and working at IU, and we got a blizzard. Mm -hmm. 
So oh. I was living on an island <laughs> off the coast of San Diego. I got a blizzard there. Then I moved up here, got another damn blizzard. I was about ready to go back. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but, yeah, but I, I couldn't remember if the power plant was working then. I, you know, oh, yeah. I knew it wasn't long after that that, that they went over to the new power plant. If we plant. had communication up there, we could ask and dump it in the ocean. <laughs> yeah, that would be nice. Yeah. <laughs> I have, a, I have baseball tonight. I looked out there this morning. I thought, oh, we don't play baseball in the snow. Gee, yes. <laughs> so anyway, uh, well, it, it's pretty nice out right now. Well, Howard, do you mind if I take a couple of shots of you? I like yeah. the way you are. Right, I'm sorry, did I say Harold? Harold. I'm sorry, Harold. Uh -huh. I'm horrible at names. Your yeah. faces. I remember your face for years. Now. Mm -hmm. Okay, Harold. Well, just come on over here for just a moment. You want to go up there and have a picture taken? Yeah. I was looking at a couple of different ways. Thinking, right now, I just give you this kind of stand in, in right into like this here. And uh, you stand there for a little bit till I get everything set that I want to set. Yeah, just come around. He wants his. Right yeah, here. you can just, just kind of lean up against that thing right there, just kind of come is in. It, is it hot? No, no. Oh. Ah, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, just, I looked up you and there was a smile. Oh, you should have. Okay, come out this way just a little bit. Follow me out this way because I'm shooting that direction. So. Dude? Yeah. Well, yeah, I got to watch that terminology. Uh, President Reagan came here a few years ago. You were, you were here then. And myself and another photographer were over there. Reagan visited the School of Technology. And we're walking through, and there's all these guys with the black sunglasses and all that. You know, I go, well, you know, if he's, we could shoot him right here as he comes in here. And this guy comes over, and he goes, no, 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 change your terminology. I go, oh, yeah, we can photograph him when he comes to here. <laughs> so, hey, you know what? And nowadays, it's, it's not any better. So, but I'm old school. It's hard to get rid of it. No, don't have it. And I'm going to wait. We have the sun. I'm going to check a couple of things. And they're going to wait. That sun pops in and out of the shade. I want to get my... That's good. Essentially, uh, you know, utility tunnels that run under the campus. Like what Marty Nelson does. Yes. Oh, yeah, Marty and I have worked together since 73. Let's take. I'm going to see if I can get you. Yeah. I'm going to bring this out. I think he's, I think he was telling me. Uh, against the snow. I 
Can't wait to see what it did to you here. That world will use the sit back. Stay put. I like it. So you are there. No, no, I started uh, actually. This is my last day until next Monday. Nope. Uh, every festivities start tonight, so I'm not much of a night owl. So I'm taking the Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday off. Yeah, damn thing don't look pretty good. See, now I always tell people at this point, this is my model's charge. Okay. Go ahead, cross that leg again like you have it. Do you remember how you had your leg crossed? I have. I, uh, you had your leg crossed a minute ago. Go ahead and do that again. Rick rolling together. No, actually, a while ago, a game plan. you were standing there and you kind of crossed the one leg over. Uh, I taught like that. Or kept her. Do you remember how you had your feet a while ago? You I'll crossed that one leg over I the other one. Seen one anything. goes front. Oh, okay. Well, we'll, we'll find it. That's good. Well, I just about done. I got those two together, and they were, like I said, formulating a game plan. So I'll get with Rick. Very good. Done here. So let's look over towards here. We're actually wrapping Turn your up. face out just a little bit. That's good. Good. And the hurt You won't just stay on here, Lynn. Okay, look toward Lynn. That'll get a good expression out of you. Good. Good, good. And again. Okay, got it. Thank you very much. You did good. Appreciate your time. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you that. You go down on Duncan Road. I'm just here. Where are you meeting? On Duncan Road. Okay, what the hell is going on? Have you been there? Have you gone to the no, I know how to behave. I don't go down there. Oh, down the road. That's the police station. <laughs> I got to figure what the duck and roll was. I know, the jail. That's I, 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 did, I just told there. him there's free room and board down there. Yeah. I drive by. I don't like to stay. 
<laughs> but I know what you're talking about. Oh, we didn't get a smile. Let me get right where you're standing here. Back over here in the shade a little bit. Come over this way. Come forward in because you're in the sunlight. I don't want you in the sun. Just walk towards me. All right, we're done. I just got a smile. I didn't get a smile up. That's. I'm going to tell you, the picture's coming. My buddy's here. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. Now give me that smile, Harold. All right, I called you the wrong name. There we go. Good. Wait, wait. Come over here, Lynn. Sorry. You stand right there. Now you can smile, Lynn. You seem to smile her better than me. Good. <laughs> there you go. Good. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Good, good. We got good stuff. Is that thing wired for sound? Oh, it's wired for sound. Actually, it's not wired for sound. sound. She's wired for sound. I'm wired for sound. I need a little microphone so I don't have to carry this. Yeah, around. although I've heard good things about that particular model. I think it, it does a good job. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know there were uh, some news photographers <clears throat> using those because they had to put together slideshows. And they were capturing mm -hmm. like the sounds of the football game and all that with those. And no kidding. So they actually work quite well. Uh -huh. Do they? They're gonna have football here next year. Well, we're gonna play. <laughs> How about basketball? We're gonna play. You, you know, I seen the picture in the journal earlier of three people that I'm not affiliated with, but I know their names. And one of them is the Morgan Burke. And the other one was uh, Matt Painter, and the other one was Daryl Hazel. On the front page is a paper. How can you imagine? Know, Where do they keep them points stored? Where do they keep the fouls stored? See, I mean, I'm looking straight at them in the morning. I can't see that foul. They have a beautiful sports facility. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we do have that. <laughs> That's a good point. Building on all the time and beautifying and things. Yeah. Mean, you know? yeah. I thought it was interesting this year. Uh, bottom for baseball. Bottom for football. Bottom for basketball. Morgan Burke gets a raise. <laughs> he might as well work for a bank. Well, my brother got traveling. <laughs> I said, well, how did you know, he might have been deserved. Yeah, Maybe it was in the works already and stuff, but I thought, you know, that's the <laughs> classic bad timing. You know, yeah. That's good. Yeah. He keeps making everybody happy. Yeah. I just fire all the time. You know, that's just part of it. I used yeah. to be a model. There we go. Like 800 years ago. Well, I, don't, I stay away from that. I stay away from that side of the camera. <laughs> this side over here bites, so yeah, I'm always I, back I here. No, that's why I'm always like <laughs> my hands. I know they always are cold hands, warm hearts. Yes, they always are. Oh, actually, I was just in Indianapolis because my uh, daughter's of, of about 37. Uh, her hands are always white. And her feet don't have, and they found her uh, the vessels are breaking down. So if they put stem cell into her feet, hoping that the stem cells start growing new veins. Yeah. The stem cell? Oh, a stent. Yes. They'll name it the Joe Arnett power plant, do you? <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, it'd be better than what it is. <laughs> uh, are those other gentlemen with you? John? No, they are not. Okay. Uh, the gentleman downstairs has a sign in and he's in the truck outside. Okay. I think they're part of the demolition. Demo contractors. Is it a Wednesday or a Thursday? What's that? Today. No, it's no, Tuesday. Tuesday yeah. <laughs> because I know that the contractors. Okay, you all take the lane, please. Whichever way we're going. Okay. 
go down the south steps. I think I'll take that pump with me over there in the garage and say, well, that's one of the last parts of the power plant that I used to see operate. Yeah. I still don't know what that thing is. I know. I think it's, it's, a, it's a plunger for the inside of a water valve. Okay. Mm -hmm. But it makes a neat little uh, artifact. Of it does. Just a second, I've got to grab Kentucky. Really? Okay. So were you born in Kentucky? Mm-hmm. And you know the easiest war that was ever won? When Kentuckians and the Blackbirds took Indiana. There wasn't a, fire, a shot fired. Really? I wait. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm from southern Indiana. I got a lot of Kentucky jokes. <laughs> oh, I have who? <laughs> oh, are you from Southern India? No, but you still have the jokes. Yeah. Well, it's the same jokes in Kentucky. You just switch out the name. Right. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. They condemn Kentucky, but that's the only state they could trust with their money. Yeah. That's, true. Yeah. that's true. That's <laughs> true. Uh oh, I'm going to take that with me. What's that? <laughs> Souvenir. I don't Souvenir. Think, I don't need it anyhow. It used to be a glass door. Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> Not anymore. Not anymore. Saved myself three thousand dollars last night. My God, did you avoid a tragedy? He said, "No, I found just the car I wanted, but I didn't buy it." <laughs> and he he bought a Pontiac, was a year old, and he lowered it. 
you know, for me, I used to love them. Nah. When the kids do that, and, and right know. there, the muffler caught on the railroad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was real loud. And he said, I think you better raise it. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, what that that barn didn't look bad to me. No. Yeah, right over there. Uh-huh. She's gonna make you sign some papers in case they make a movie out of it. You're not gonna get okay. any money, so <laughs> okay, well, go ahead and sit down. Go ahead and sit down. Oh, where are you gonna sit? I'm gonna stand right beside you. Oh. 